Hello, this is Kerry Schutz with MathWorks, and this is part three in our videos on using frames in Simulink and how they can be tricky. Uh, where we loft off in part two was we encountered an algebraic loop. So in this video, um, we're going to, shall we say, work around or deal with that algebraic loop. So let's go off to the model and uh, see where we left off. This was our frame-based version of our discrete time integrator. It contained an algebraic loop. It kind of tells you where. Uh, it's essentially the, the loop itself. And so, as I, I mentioned last time, that this loop is physically unrealizable. So that's bad. And two, it, you'll take a simulation speed hit, also bad. So we'd like to resolve that. We will not be benchmarking in this um, video because this model is so simple that it's really not worth benchmarking. We'll do or use a more involved uh, digital filter for that. So let's, uh, what I'm going to use it for the worker, we need like, four or five extra blocks to, to work around this problem. The main block on the outside is the four iterator subsystem, okay? This is gonna do our, shall we say, our loop unrolling and rolling. If we go in, what I'm gonna do also is copy uh, the main part, the computational part there, the loop, and I will put it inside of the input and output port blocks that go between those. And you can see I also have a four iterator block inside of this four iterator subsystem. Um, for this block, we don't need to do a lot. We just need to specify the uh, frame size, which is four. And really that's it, okay? We don't need to change any other settings on here. And most of the time you won't necessarily need to. Um, I'm gonna say, okay. And the other couple blocks I'll need is one, I will need a selector block. This will kind of like pick off the inputs. And I also need an assignment block. Let's just pull that in. And this is going to be used on the output side. Um, okay, so let's concentrate on the input side first. Um, I've already set up the four iterator to say the frame size is four. We're going to count up here one, two, three, four uh, for every input uh, input sample that comes in for the frame. And then for this block, the selector, I need to specify a few things. One is that the indexing is going to be done by a port, not just some hard coded values like it is by default. And I'll say it comes from port. I'm also going to say the input port size is also the frame size. That's four apply. And the number of input dimensions is actually two because we got an M by N or in this case, four by one for the input. So we say, okay, okay. And that will go to the index uh, for the actual uh, U input to our um selector block that will be of course the input data itself and i'll just we'll just connect that up so that takes care of our input side what about the output side with well, the output side i do something very similar the assignment block is sort of like the corollary to the selector block a uh, number of input dimensions i'll say two again um it's again a port based implementation and I will initialize using the input port. Why not? That's fine. That's really not critical here. But basically, you want to just get your output dimensions right and whether you're going to use the port uh, to control it, So, which I am. So, so we have three inputs on this one instead of two. We've got an initial value. We need to specify how you initialize the output of the assignment block. The U input is the output of our, not that input, is the output of our device under test. And we use the same indexing scheme for the input as the for the output. So that's pretty simple. For the initial values of why not, or for the output, they can be anything. I'm going to use a constant block to specify them. And I'm going to specify them as all zeros. So that'll be zeros of four comma one, the frame size comma one. Of course, in practice, you would probably have a MATLAB variable here to parameterize this. I'm just hard coding values here. But you notice it would be handy. I've had to hard code four there. I've had to hard code, uh, I didn't hard code there for there, but I had to hard code for here and here. So, you know, it's a little tedious. So you probably want a MATLAB variable in case you change that frame size sometime. Okay, so that's it. Um, got this four iterator, it's going to unroll the loop, implement this, and then uh, build, build up the output, again, the frame at the output. All right, so let's test this out. I'm going to comment out this one since it has the algebraic loop in it. We don't want that one. 
I'll drag this one down. I do want a sine wave block and I do want a scope block with the frame base setting for the input. And yeah, we, we would probably use a different number convention here, but I'm just gonna leave it at one. And let's just run it for two milliseconds. And I got an error. So let's just see what happened here. Okay. Um, let's see here, number of output dimensions. Uh, let's see, what did I do wrong here? All right, did I, should I have left that at one? Let's just try to see if I made a mistake there. And let's see. Oh, I need to, I need to uncomment my scope. Let's run it again. Let's see what I get. And indeed, I get the right thing. So, and you notice the main thing is we've got the correct output. That's the same as we had for the top implementation. And we got rid of our algebraic loop error. So these two outputs, these two systems would give us the same thing. We could overlay these on top of each other. Let's run it again. But you'll see on this bottom implementation, which is the same, we have the algebraic loop back in the system. So we don't want that in general. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I over deleted. Uh, let's go ahead and say, get rid of that. Get rid of that. And we'll put this down here as such. And uh, that is good. Okay. So we have now a working uh, frame based discrete time integrator. It's uh, frame size is four. And we got managed to get rid of the algebraic loop. Now, it is a little tedious uh, to set that up. There was probably, you would say, nothing intuitive about what I did there, but it is a common design pattern you can just remember and use um, as you so choose. Um, there's, you know, once you get used to adding the four iterator, the selector, in fact, it always helps to turn on these blocks when you're not used to uh, using them so you know what they're called. Um, we've got, again, the, the assignment block, a constant block to initialize, a selector block to select off individual elements, and a four iterator block. All of these blocks can be found in the base uh, Simulink library. Um, so, you know, there's no problem there. If you like, if you type, for instance, selector, uh, you'll be able to find it in short order. Okay, it's right here or it's right here. Uh, it's actually exists in a number of different places uh, you can pull it from. So if you go under, um, let's see here, where was it? Signal routing right here. And if you go and look under signal routing, you can find selector right there. Uh, I believe you can also find, uh, let's see, is assignment in that same area. Let's see, I'm not seeing it there just yet. I'm surprised it's not there. A-S-S-I-G-N. Let's just see where that's at. Uh, oh, it's under math operations assignment. So if you go here and there it exists right there. So you can find these blocks uh, in your Simulink library browser. All right, that's all I'm gonna cover in this video. In the next video, we'll get into a more complicated digital filtering example where this four iterator system really pays off. And we'll see that by quantifying it via timing benchmarks. Okay, until then.